grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us pray together. Good morning. Thank you, Pastor Dave, for that warm welcome. Just a few announcements for the faith community that is gathered here. Uh, we, at this point in time on Sunday, our uh, survey uh, for reopening uh, has been closed. Um, and so you can look out for uh, some of those survey results coming out in our next newsletter. Um, and uh, some of those, those numbers will be posted there. Our reopening team will use those numbers to assess how we move forward uh, in the coming months uh, in terms of reopening um, and uh, moving towards in-person worship. Uh, we are uh, approaching it um, carefully and cautiously, uh, but also um, deliberately um, in effort to try to gather our community back together. Uh, and as, as Pastor Dave was also mentioning, we at Faith continue to have our uh, fellowship gatherings each Wednesday at 6.30. Uh, please join us. We had a great gathering. We had a great meeting this past Wednesday. Um, and so we highly encourage you to check in with us. It is a time of prayer and, and check-ins so that we can support one another during this time as we continue to social distance. Um, and so we are so grateful um, for you worshiping here this day. Uh, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we begin with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, 
let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we, we confess, confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our gathering hymn this morning is Guide Me, Ever Great Redeemer, hymn number 618. Pray together. Glorious God, your generosity waters the world with goodness, and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit, and with this food fill all the starving world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Ho, everyone who thirsts. Come to the waters. And you that have no money, 
Come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Let us now read together Psalm 145 responsibly. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord, you are good to all, and your compassion is over all your works. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. You are righteous in all your ways and loving in all your works. You are near to all who call upon you, to all who call upon you faithfully. You fulfill the desire of those who fear you. You hear their cry and save them. You watch over all those who love you, but all the wicked you shall destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord, let all flesh bless God's holy name forever and ever. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. to have my snack this morning. It's a really nice day to have a snack. Some peanut butter pretzels, yum. Oh, hey, there's Eleanor. I wasn't expecting to see her today. Hi. Hi. I'm sure I'll be happy to share with you. I didn't bring very much, though. He can, but we'll just have to stretch it a little bit further. I didn't bring anything else with me. 
Okay. Oh, you brought some to share? That's perfect. Maybe we can. Elias, do you want to come share some snack with us? No. Not right now? Okay, that's fine. We'll just have it here for you for later. It's nice to be able to have some to share, right? Oh, you want some too? Eleanor brought some snack for us to share. Yeah, yeah you're welcome. Okay. Alright, now you can go play. You two can go play and I'll finish it up. In the gospel lesson today, we hear a story about Jesus and the disciples being with a huge crowd of people, 5,000, more than 5,000. And it's getting close to dinner time. And the disciples say to Jesus, I think you should tell people to go home so they can get something to eat. There's not any stores nearby, nowhere for people to get food. And Jesus says, you give them something to eat. And the disciples say, uh, we didn't bring enough food for 5,000 people. So Jesus says to them, go see what you have. And they go out to the crowd and ask around and they come back with five loaves of bread and two fish, which does not seem like enough to feed 5,000 people. And somehow Jesus makes it enough. And that's the miracle in the story. Something else that I think is a really important part of the story is that someone or maybe a couple of people in the crowd were willing to give Jesus what they had maybe a loaf of bread or a fish or a couple loaves of bread and their willingness to give even just that little bit which probably didn't seem like enough to them either was what made it possible for Jesus to do the miracle. So what I want you to remember today is that even if you what you have food or money or even kindness or um, or happiness and laughter feels small and like it might not be enough if you give it to God, God can turn it into something amazing. And that is a great gift to share. Let's pray. God, thank you for inviting us to be part of the amazing work you're doing in the world. Please help us to remember that nothing we have to give is ever too small. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Our gospel reading for today begins with these words. Now when Jesus heard this. Heard what? What did Jesus hear? We need to go back to the beginning of the chapter when we learn of the tragic death of John the Baptist beheaded at the orders of Herod Antipas, ruler of the Galilee. The news is brought to Jesus, this is what he heard, which then prompted Jesus to head off into the wilderness, the deserted place. Is he going there to hide from Herod? Or grieve the execution of his cousin John? Or rest and pray? Maybe all three of these are in play. But Jesus' plans go awry. The crowds heard, too, heard of Jesus going into the wilderness, and they follow him. And what is Jesus' reaction to the crowd, to, to, to them ruining his time away? Does he become angry? Just the opposite. When Jesus sees the crowds, crowds of impoverished, marginalized people who are living with disease, living with little joy and much despair. Jesus, the one who embodies kindness and hope, begins healing them. In the desert place of emptiness, he fills it with his loving and caring presence. When the shadows lengthen and the hour becomes late, the disciples asked Jesus to send the crowds back into the villages because the people are without food and they're hungry. Jesus refuses. Instead, he orders his disciples, you give them something to eat. And then we hear the voice of scarcity. You've heard that voice before, haven't you? The voices that say, oh, we don't have enough. It's a zero-sum game, you know. I have mine, you go get yours. There's not enough money, there's not enough talent, there's not enough energy to go around. You give 
give them something to eat. Jesus' command is simple. No ambiguity here. No buts of, or, or, or if this or if that. No equivocation. Clear, direct, immediate. You give them something to eat. Taking five loaves, two fish, Jesus gives them to the disciples and more than 5,000 men, women, and children are fed. To this day, Jesus' command resonates with his followers. I'm very pleased to let you know that the Salem congregation has given $7,700 so far this year to the Catonsville Emergency Assistance, CEA, our local Catonsville food pantry. The food pantry that gives food to the hungry in our community. We've also sent hundreds and hundreds of pounds of non-perishable food to CEA. We continue to send food for the preparation of meals at the men's homeless shelter in Catonsville. The people of faith in Cockeysville have had a long history of meal preparation for the ministry of Sarah's Hope and, and to their robust support for their local food pantry in Cockeysville. On Saturday, July 25th, CEA held its annual Christmas in July event. In the two hours I worked at the event, the Kingsville community brought 1,200 pounds of food and $665 in donations. And at the end of the day, we received over 3,000 pounds of food and over $3,000 in donations. You give them something to eat. And thanks to the movement of the Holy Spirit in the lives of our congregations and of our communities, we do. Abundance abounds and it is shared. Now we know this beloved story as Jesus feeds the 5,000, but, but perhaps a more accurate title would be Jesus uses the disciples to feed the 5,000. And in 2020, in the face of a pandemic that will not let us go, of mounting economic woes, of pervasive political turmoil, we respond to Jesus' call, and Jesus uses you and me time and time again. Jesus uses our 21st century communities of disciples to be his hands of compassion, mercy and kindness. You give them something to eat, and we do. We would be remiss not to pay attention to the nature of how Jesus prepared the food for the disciples to distribute to the hungry crowd sitting in the grass. We are told that Jesus took the five loaves and two fish, gave thanks, and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples took, thank, broke, gave the Eucharist. On the night when Jesus was betrayed and handed over to the authorities, he had a meal with his disciples in the upstairs room. And after supper, he took the bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples. The sacrament of Holy Communion. The sacrament of joyous, unending abundance that is shared with all. And one final detail for us to pay attention to. After all the people ate and had full stomachs, there was food left over. Scraps of fish and bread all over the place. Disciples gathered all these leftovers and filled 12 baskets, 12 baskets full. Reminds me of Calvin Trillin, the food writer and humorist, who was quoted as saying, the, remotest, the most remarkable thing about my mother is that for 30 years she served the family nothing but leftovers. The original meal has never been found. All were fed. All were filled. And there was plenty left over. Baskets filled with an 
extravagant excess. Jesus does not discard anything. Everything is treasure, even the leftovers. There is no person, no group of people who Jesus will allow to be discarded. The left out, the lost, and the least of these are precious to Jesus. No one is excluded. All are gathered into God's beloved community. And today, and today, like disciples of old, we gather food in the name of the one whose compassion knows no bounds. We modern day disciples listen, we obey the command, and we distribute food for hungry neighbors and strangers alike, knowing that there is still enough to go on sharing and sharing and sharing. Thanks be to the God of abundant grace. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of the day is I Am the Bread of Life, number 485.
Jesus and for all people according to their need. Good and gracious God, so many of us are able to lift up prayers of thanksgiving to you today for the abundance in our lives, for the abundance of food, for the abundance of money and possessions, for the abundance of good health. For that, O oh Lord, we are so grateful. And we pray that you would continue to use us in new ways, in new and exciting ways, to be your hands of compassion for our communities and for the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Abundant God, you take resources that appear to be meager, bless them, and there is enough. May your church trust that what you bless and ask us to share with the world is abundantly sufficient. We ask you to bless our feeding ministries and our connection with our local communities. Bless all leaders of this church, our bishops Elizabeth and Bill, all pastors, deacons, staff, and lay leaders of this church, that we might lead by your example of extravagant generosity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Imaginative God, your bountiful creation offers sustenance and life for all beloved creatures. Protect this abundance for the well-being of all. Inspire us to reverse the damage we have caused your creation. Replenish groundwater supplies, provide needed rains in places of drought, and protect forests from wildfires. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of justice, you offer yourself to all the nations and peoples of the earth, inviting everyone to abundant life. Bring this prophetic vision to fullness, that nation leaders and governments would receive your wisdom and spirit to care for their people, to strive to ensure equality and equity for all, and to live into your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, you open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Hear the anguish of tender hearts who cry to you in suffering and satisfy their deepest needs. Bring wholeness and healing to those who suffer in body, heart, soul, and mind. We pray especially for the continued healing of Marcy Schuett, for Val Ponsini recovering from a fall, and for Phil Schaefer recovering from retina surgery. We also give thanks this week for the third anniversary of Pastor Micah's ordination, and we give thanks for his ministry to the faith and Salem communities. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We also pray this day for John and Kathy, Margaret and Bob, Linda, Pat and Meg in their travels, Tripp and his parents Sarah and Kurt, during his hospitalization. Martha, June, Butch, Tom, Jill and Stefan in their travels, Kenny and Karen, and for Jordan in his travels. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we hold to the sure and certain promise that you listen to all of our prayers. We place them into your merciful hands in the name of the one who died and lives for us, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let's share God's peace with one another. Peace be with you. Peace, peace, peace. We are now entering into our time of offering. Uh, God has given abundantly to all of creation, and at this time we celebrate that generosity uh, through music and talent and treasure. And, and so as, as we enter into this time, we thank you for your continued generosity, your support of all of our ministries, especially our feeding ministries this day, uh, for both Salem and Faith, um, as we continue to support our local communities. 
Uh, if you are able to contribute to our ministries, you can do so by either Salem or Faith's website and, and giving in those give tabs. You can also mail in checks to either building and they will be received as well. We are so grateful for the generosity that you show our ministries and that we can show to the world. Thank you again. Let us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. We give you thanks for all the signs of your abundant grace in our lives. Nourish us through these gifts, that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now receive the benediction. Neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor anything else in all of creation, 
separate us from God's love in Christ Jesus our Lord. May God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you now and always. Amen. Our sending hymn is Son of God, Eternal Savior, hymn number 655. Thanks be to God.